Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy, and today I'm going to be giving you a celebrity reading for 2024. Now, I thought we'd just do it as a little bit of fun today, a little bit of light viewing. Um, remember, my videos are for entertainment purposes only, guys, so take them what you choose. I'm going to close my eyes, guys, and we'll see what comes up. Gosh, I'm getting like, I'm getting Harry and Meghan, the part of the Royal Kardashian clan, might be doing a bit of a like remarrying ceremony. It might be even in Zim, is it Zimbabwe? Where's that where they do their thing? They might do some sort of ceremony just to highlight to the rest of the world that their marriage is fine and everything's good. I am getting that. Um, there might be some sort of matrimonial experience that they, they have in a different country. I am getting that for them just to reiterate and let the rest of the world see that everything's fine, everything's kosher. Um, I am getting that. <sighs> William and Kate are definitely going to be pushed forward now. I've been saying that for a while on my channel that Kate Middleton's going to be pushed forward as the female energy of the Royal Kardashians. Um, I feel like William and Kate are really going to be like served up on a platter in 2024 to the people. I really feel like Chucky and, um, sorry, we call Charles, King Charles, Chucky here, um, and Camilla are going to be just stepping right back. They don't want it. They're too old. They're not interested. They'll do the very basic ceremonies, but they think, well, William's going to eventually have the throne anyway, so let's just let them have it now. I am feeling that for 2024. We're going to see them served up on the platter. The big silver platter of Royal Kardashians. We're going to get a lot more of Kate and Will. Um... Oh, God, I'm getting Britney Spears. Oh, this can't be good. We know her marriage is just broken up, hasn't it? And oh, everything just seems to go south. Oh, my God. Um, hang on, let's see where we go. Oh, no. I am getting Britney Spears might do some sort of world tour. Oh, no. I don't think she's up for a world tour, is she? Oh, well, there might be talk about a world tour. Whether it comes off or not is a whole different story. But I do feel like there's some sort of... She's trying to, uh, sadly for her, she's trying to recap her memories of when she was really young. And like anybody does, as you're getting older, you want to hang on to things. I mean, example, Madonna. Um, so I do feel like Britney might sort of go on a bit of a, a world tour. Although I don't think it's going to be very world tour. I think it's going to be like five shows. Because um, she won't have the energy in that to do it and the mental capacity. Um so she used to do lots of dancing and all that, but she can't really, the, she hasn't got the stamina anymore. And, and you just, you don't have that, mm, I suppose it's agility as you do when you're young. But I am feeling that, but it's going to be, oh no, no. I feel like the reviews will be ordinary. It'll only be the real true diehard fans that will even go and see Britney. It could be like another flop of the century. I hope not for her sake. But I do feel like she's trying to relive her past. But unfortunately, I think it's all behind her now. I, I do. I just feel like it's behind her. Um, you know, at least she's trying to do something that she loves and is passionate about. And I think that's the hard part when someone changes so dramatically like she has. It's hard for people to see her in the same light. See, she still feels the same. Even though she might have had her ups and downs. We all do. I don't think we can judge. But I do feel like people don't view her the same way. I think people view her as a little nutty, to be honest. And some of the stuff she does on TikTok and that, well, you can kind of understand. But in her mind, she's still this little girl who wore the plaits or whatever it was in the school uniform sort of thing. Like, she still thinks she's got that all going on. But um, people don't see her that way anymore. That, that that part of Britney's life is finished, I feel. But she wants to cling to it. I mean, that's not uncommon, is it, for women, especially as they're getting older, to want to go and relive 
you know, to feel good about themselves and have their ego stroked. And that's quite normal. I mean, why do people have plastic surgery and do all these things for, to keep young and to have attention? So I don't think Britney's any different to most famous women, to be honest. But I don't think it's going to be a big world tour. I think it's only going to be like five shows or something like that. But I am seeing her making, you know, trying to make a little comeback. And she's got a good voice. She should just be herself and sing. And I don't know why they do these things. I don't know why Madonna does those things. <laughs> but she does. A bit too much plastic surgery, I think. Anyway, let's see where else we go. I'm getting that. Is it Jason Derulo? He's doing the voice here at the moment in Australia, I think. Um, I feel like he's going to have a lot more hits. He's actually got some quite good music, hasn't he? Well, I feel like he's going to have a lot more hits in 2024. Uh, real catchy too. R really quite catchy. Um, almost to the level of that, um, is it Farrell? 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 Um, the guy that sang, is it Happy and all those kind of songs? He's got some great music. It's going to be like on that level, like songs that are as big as that. I mean, I know he's got songs as big as that, but I do feel like Jason Derulo's going to have a few big hits next year. Um, all right. I'm getting Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban. Um... I feel like they're gonna have a lucky escape and it could be around like a car event some sort of lucky escape for them it's all going to be about timing they're going to miss something because they decided to go somewhere else but see this is the unif universe guiding people and they must listen to their intuition uh, perhaps keith is quite a spiritual person i guess writing the music he does but perhaps um Perhaps they're going to avoid something because they're going to make a decision that's going to change the course of their life. I do feel that. It's one of those sliding door moments they're going to have next year where they realise, crap, if we hadn't listened to our gut feeling and our instincts, that could have been us. Like, it could be to do with an accident. It could be to do with oh, a building collapse. It could be something. I'm just feeling that for Keith and Nicole. Kidman, Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman. There'll be some close encounter. It'll be like a close encounter, you know, with that music, that do 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 something weird. But um But it's gonna be like it, just how important it is to listen to your intuition is what they're gonna say. You know, it just shows you that if you don't listen to your intuition, um you can get caught up in something. That's what I'm feeling for them. They're going to have a, like a close shave. Hmm, interesting. Because they're quite... But it's their... Spirituality, the guides are saying, that is going to um, save them. The sliding doors moment for them next year. Hmm, you're right. I'm feeling like next year there might be a remake of something like Gilligan's Island. It's going to be like, <laughs> I love Gilligan's Island. If you're young, you might not know Gilligan's Island. You might have to Google search that. Um, I am getting that there could be some sort of a remake of Gilligan's Island. Um, or it's going to be very similar or it could be like a movie, a Gilligan's Island movie. Hopefully it's not too woke. Um, but I am getting that there could be some sort of a remake of like a Gilligan's Island movie. I loved Gilligan's Island. How funny was it? How funny was Gilligan? <laughs> he always stuffed up all the escapes. <laughs> all the chances to be saved. Gilligan always trip over the cord or something. <laughs> Good for a laugh, that show. All right, let's keep going. Gosh, for some reason I'm getting Essex, England. Hang on, let me see what's happening here. Essex might be um, like the stage for some very big concert. Um, oh, I am feeling that. There might be some sort of concert. I don't know what's in Essex. 
but I am feeling there could be some like fundraising concert, um, a big event, a big event, almost like to the level of the um, Band Aid project, this kind of thing, um, you know, save the world sort of event. I do feel like in Essex, is that in London? It's in England, definitely, UK. Um, yeah, I feel like it's gonna be, the spotlight's gonna be put on Essex for some reason. Whether that something happens there and then there's like this fundraising concert or the concert's um, going to be in Essex. I don't know if you have a big, like, what do they call them? Those singing bowl things, the stage. Um, anyway, I'm just getting Essex and something around like a big, enormous concert, but like a fundraising concert. Um, I'm just getting that. It's definitely fundraising. It's definitely a, to help people, whether it's to help the people of Essex or whether it's in Essex. There's something around Essex. Um, I'm getting The View. You know that show, The View? Oh, I can't stand The View. It's got that Whoopi Goldberg and all that on it in America. I feel like the ratings are really starting to drop on The View. I feel like that view might be um, on its last legs. God, I hope so. I can't stand that show. They're so opinionated. Um, I am getting that um, they might be taken off air. Their popularity is really declining um, because they say such stupid crap on there. Um, it's just their opinions all the time. They're not even... They don't even have constructive arguments, do they? So I do feel the view might get scrapped and might get canned. Um, that's just what I'm getting for next year. Um, and it might get replaced by something more liberating. Uh, more liberating. Oh, my God. Hang on. Oh, what the, what the guides are saying. They might mix it up more. They might um, come up with a different kind of concept where it's more a guys and girls thing, not just five women there bitching on. It might have to be more men involved and um, more debating, um, not just one way kind of thing. I feel like the view is on decline, is in decline. Yay. Although they said that about the project here in Australia and then it stayed on air. They said it was getting taken off air and it stayed on and it's still left. It's all left, the um, project. So I don't know how it's still on. Um, probably got funding from government like the ABC. It gets funding from government here. And they only show one side of the story ever. Um, so I am getting that about the view. All right. God, I'm getting Paul Newman. Um, when I first started channeling, I used to get Paul Newman all the time. I sometimes wondered if he was one of my guides or something like that. It's kind of weird, I know. But I did get him a lot. Um, not so much now. But I do feel like there could be a movie coming out around Paul Newman's life. I don't know if there already is. Or um, this is going to be a different version of it. Um, I do feel that there might be... You know what it might be? It might be like a real full-on documentary. You know how you get those documentaries um, about their career and and all the women they were with might be interviewed. I'm just kind of getting this Paul Newman, the race, this is a race car actor, the race car driving actor, Paul Newman. He's got his own salad sauces and things, hasn't he? Um, I feel like there might be a, a, a documentary. Sophie, she's digging a hole. Of course she is, to sit in, because she's my dog Sophie is a grubby. I'm gonna show you guys, look. Let's sit in the dirt again. She's just dug a big hole. Sophie. Mm, that's my rescue dog. I own um, her brother as well called Sprocket. <laughs> the big goofs. Um, so that's what I'm getting. Paul Newman documentary series. It might be a documentary series actually too. It could be on Netflix or something. But it might be a movie. One of the two. Anyway, let's keep going. I feel like Alice in Wonderland is going to become a big musical hit. It's going to become a big musical hit. <coughs> Everyone loves Alice in Wonderland, don't they? 
it's kind of saying to me it'll be as big of a hit as like Hamilton and like The Lion King. Um, and then I'm getting Alice in Wonderland. It might be even a slightly different version, but I am getting that Alice in Wonderland might be a very big stage hit around the world. Um, interesting. Because I guess if you think about it, it's just a bit of escapism, Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? And it's colourful as long as... Sprop. Come here. Come here now. Sorry, here's my other dog. Come here. Come. Ah, ah. Spock it. As long as they don't make it. Come here. Ah. Too woke. Because when they make everything woke, it turns people off. I think we could all agree that Disney at the moment has been having trouble with their new Snow White movie with Rachel Zegler um, saying silly, ridiculous things. Anyway, so, you know, hopefully people wake up to what people actually want to view. So I am getting that. Alice in Wonderland might become a very big stage show in 2024. Um, all right. I'm seeing Johnny Depp, and I'm seeing that he's going to have great success um, in 2024 and 2025. I feel like he's really rebuilding his career and rebranding. Not rebranding so much, but he's, he's doing a lot more on the um, sort of serious side of acting. I feel like... You know, we all know him as the uh, character of, of being the weird, you know, Edward Scissorhands and the um, Willy Wonka and um, obviously Jack Sparrow, who we all know and love of Pirates of the Caribbean. But I feel like now um, that Johnny's maturing, he, he's wanting to take his career path to the next level. So he's wanting some more in-depth characters um, that have a little bit more of a darker side and a mystery. So I feel like he's going to actually have quite a lot of success um, in some new movies. And he might even um, be directing as well, like directing, acting, um, putting, honing all his skills um, into a wider area of commitment. He, he, he wants to trial a few new things. I do feel that for Johnny Depp. He's very well liked, Johnny Depp. I know some people don't like him. I love him. But I know... Um, that he's got quite a big fan base. He really has. He's got a big fan base. Um, so I'm seeing him having, you know, quite a bit of success. I don't think the Amber Heard Johnny Depp court case affected him, to be honest. I, I think it probably took a toll on him. Um, but at the end of the day, it kind of put him, strange as it is, back in the limelight. And I think people have rediscovered Johnny Depp again and they realise the enormity of his talents. Um, you know, he's not a bad person. He, he's actually a very, very skilled actor. So I'm seeing him having a lot of success next year and into the following year. Um, I feel like he's going to come out with some really great movies, some really brilliant movies um, that people are going to be talking about a lot. It's good. It's good. He's got a lot of talent. All right, let's see if there's anything else. I feel like there's a lot of Aussie actors who are going to keep having success abroad. Um, I know, and a lot of you guys know, there's been a lot of Aussie actors here, like the Liam Hemsworth and um, what's his brother's name? <laughs> All the Hemsworth brothers. Um, they've had great success overseas, but I'm feeling like there's even more Aussie actors that are going to go overseas and have great success. Joel Edgerton is another one. Oh, there's Hugh Jackman. Um, but I feel like there's more Aussie actors that are going to have great success overseas. Um, we know a lot come from Neighbours Home in a way and all this kind of thing. Well, I feel like there's going to be more of them that are going to get discovered. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? More Aussie actors are going to take off overseas and have great success in different kinds of movies, not just the Marvel movies. There's like other movies. It could even be, um, oh, I'm getting like horror movies even where they play really good roles in some like very scary horror movies or scary shows. Might even be um, like sort of role, for example, like on the level of Stranger Things off Netflix, things like that. Very successful like horror shows or scary shows. Um, some of them might slip into some roles in these. So I'm seeing um, good outcomes for Aussie actors um, next year as well we're going to hear about more of their success i'm seeing mostly men mostly males though mostly males you get the odd female but most sprocket sit down 
but mostly males. Um, all right, let me see if there's anything else to close with today. Spocket. I mean, my dog's eating a bone. Sorry, guys. Don't look at him, Sophie. <laughs> he's doing it right near Sophie, his sister. And he's a bit funny with his bones. All right. Sprocket. I'm getting Japan. Oh, I'm seeing a really... Oh, what am I getting? I'm getting one of these art movies in Japan coming out. And it's going to be a big hit. A big hit. Almost like that. Is it um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon or something like that? Like these kind of things. I'm getting that. There's going to be a big movie coming out of Japan next year. Um, you know, like with the samurai swords and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like it's going to be, have a very beautiful story to it. You know, it's one of these shows where in the beginning and it's going to show you the person as like a child and then they're going to evolve into who who they are. But it's going to be like a just a beautiful story. I'm getting that. Something's going to come out of Japan. It's going to be shot in Japan. Um, the scenery is going to be in Japan. It's going to be just um, a majestic movie, but it's still going to have a very good and interesting storyline. Um, that's just what I'm getting. Hang on a minute. Oh, I'm getting like the White Lotus, which is weird, but I don't... I don't think that's the name of it. I'm just getting that. Hang on. I'm getting the title might be something like um, the something within. The something within. So it's like, it's like, it's going to be a real meaningful movie. People are going to be really moved by this movie. Um, for example, it reminds me a little bit of like, remember when Brokeback Mountain came out and it, it really moved people? I know not everybody loved Brokeback Mountain. I loved it. I loved Jack Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger. And I absolutely loved that movie. I thought it was just so beautiful about just a relationship. It was just, the scenery was stunning. It was beautifully filmed. I think it was Ang Lee that filmed it. Um, it's going to have that kind of vibe. But it's going to be about um, something from within. It's like a discovery of something from within, which will probably be a really good movie for a lot of people who are trying to find themselves in these crazy times that we're kind of going through. So I feel like the movie is going to not only be entertaining, but it's also going to have a lot of meaning and sort of purpose to it to help people. I, I feel that's what I'm feeling. It's something um, within. I'm almost getting like, something something you're looking for outside can be found within it's something about that that's what i'm getting for the heading a japanese movie interesting it'll be in english it won't be like subtitled it'll be in english too like a proper english movie but it'll just be shot in japan and this the theme will be japanese all right let me see if there's anything else to close with today Gosh, I'm getting, oh, I get sports people too, I suppose, but I'm getting that Tim Horan might captain the Wallabies. I'm just getting that. He may not, or he might just help coach, but I am getting Tim Horan might captain the Wallabies, which is the Australian rugby team, which really needs some help at the moment. So I am getting, for some reason, Tim Horan. Um, he might just be involved, but I am getting that for the Wallabies here in Australia. Let's see if there's anything more. I am getting our brand, Big Russ. I'm not going to say it because at the moment he's under attack by YT. Um, there's a lot of documentaries on about him. 
and he, he doesn't hide that he was promiscuous and that in his early days. I do feel like he might, um, it's shown me him climbing up a ladder out of this hell hole that he's currently in. He may be able to climb his way out of it. Um, at the moment, it seems like it's an improbable event, but I do feel like he's got very, very good lawyers. Um, he's got a very good team that, uh, they, I just feel like he's got such a good team that they're going to expose some of these lies. Perhaps some of this is lies. We, we don't know. Only he knows um, and the person involved knows. But it does seem weird that there's sort of people have gone out to find these people. Um, like, why haven't they said anything before? It, you know how it goes. A little bit like the Trump event. Um, when someone's gaining traction and success, of course, people come out the woodwork to take them down. But I do feel like he might be able to climb his way out using a ladder, and the ladder being a really good um, handful of lawyers. He's going to have very, very good lawyers that do a lot, a lot of digging, and I feel like the lawyers might expose a few things about these women as well. Um, that they've got sort of a sordid past and history, some of them, and they're a bit known for um, some of their indiscrepancies and lying and different things like that. So I think it's going to be interesting, but I think he might climb his way out of this debacle that he's currently in. Um, oh, it's just a shit fight, isn't it, at the moment, that whole thing? Um, let me see if there's anything else to close with. Oh, for some reason, they're giving me that David Bowie song. Um, my little China girl. My little China girl. Just you close your mouth. Mm. I don't know why we're getting that. But I'm getting visions of David Bowie. David Bowie. We know he's dead. Isn't he? David Bowie is dead. I'm sure of it. Um... Might be something around his children. One of his kids or something might be a singer. I, I'm not sure if he's got children. Did he have children with that Aman? Um, or it could be a relative of his. I am seeing someone coming, appearing more that's related to David Bowie. Related, definitely related to David Bowie. And the thing is, they'll sing very similarly or they might even have the, the bit of the crazies. You know how David Bowie was a bit out there wasn't he he was innovative before his time and he did have the two different eyes didn't he so i am getting that someone related to david bowie might end up being a bit of a singer and it'll be a bit spooky it'll be it might be like down the line relative or whoever but it, it'll be a bit spooky it's going to spook people out because he's going to sound the same he's going to sound the same and have the same kind of style very interesting. <laughs> How is this styling? <laughs> Classic. All right, let's see if there's anything else to play with today. The guys are just saying to me too, just to be aware guys, that a lot of this stuff around celebrities is very fake. Um, we know the Kardashian world's quite fake. We know pretty much their Instagram posts are, you know, done through filters and things are changed a bit and their bums and that are plastic surgery. We know a lot of this stuff is fake. So a lot of the celebrity world is fake and the stuff you're being fed is fake. Even around people's personalities, um, a lot of the stuff you're being fed is fake and to be very aware of it when it comes to celebrities. Don't believe everything you hear and don't believe everything you see. It's not the real world is what I'm getting told, which I think most of us here know that anyway. Um, all right. And for some reason, I'm getting that Ron Weasley out of Harry Potter. 
um, you know, the redhead guy we all know and love, Ronnie Weasley. Um, he he did a movie recently, and it was that Knock on the Cabin or something. I think it was a bit of an epic flop, actually. Um, I'm getting that he's going to have more success too next year. I feel like he's going to play some more serious roles. Um, he wants to be taken very seriously as an actor, and I think he is a very, very good actor. Um, I am seeing better roles for him. He's going to, it's showing me him crawling his way out of a ditch and that he's going to have better success because he's going to go for roles that really fit his sort of personality and character. I am seeing that for him. Um, I can't think what his name is. I call him Ron Weasley because I don't know his name, but I'm seeing, yeah, better success for him in 2024. He hasn't quite had the roles and I see a lot of that too could come down to, you know, the CV virus and that affected a lot of these industries because um, they couldn't make a lot of movies and things. So people were sort of probably grabbing at everything. Um, but I do feel he's going to have more success. He's going to he's gonna be taken quite seriously as an actor. He's going to play some really amazing roles. I think he's going to surprise everybody. Because um, when you're in a movie, you know, it's easy to see, for example, Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter or Hermione Granger as Hermione. Or But look at her in Beauty and the Beast. She played an incredible role in that. So you can put yourself to other roles. So I feel like this is where Ron Weasley is going to put himself to a different role. He's going to he's going to be taken seriously as an actor now, like he was before. But I feel like when people see the movies he's in, um, they're going to escape into that movie with him. They're not going to think, oh, there's Ron Weasley being silly and all that stuff. They're not going to. He's going to. He's moving to that more mature level of acting now. All right, let me see if there's something to close with today. Oh, I'm getting a John English song to finish off with today. <laughs> oh, I'm getting, um, John English is an Australian singer here, if you haven't heard of him. And it's that, and a Hollywood seven moves through until your name goes up in the lights. I'm, called, I'm sure it's called Hollywood 17. Um, it's something like that. I'm going to leave you with that song today around this um we might come on and do some more um celebrity videos down the track let me know down below if you guys want me to do those be interesting to see if anything comes of these um i don't normally do celebrity readings i normally do just general prediction readings um if you are new to my channel i have got prediction readings for 2024 part one and part two i've got financial reading as well and now yeah i've got this celebrity reading so let's try and see if we can come up with anything it's just good for a laugh if nothing else anyway guys all right i'm gonna say goodbye from australia goodbye from me and the doggos um sprocket's still chewing his bone sophie's yep laying in the dirt <laughs> she's and you know the funniest part is she's got a horrific grass allergy so i don't actually mind her laying in the dirt that's why she wears clothes because she has to have injections and everything she's her skin's so bad it's like eczema all right i'm gonna say goodbye from australia go check out that song by john english um, I think it's called Hollywood 7. Hollywood 7, rooms to rent, to your name goes up in lights. <laughs> All right, I'll say goodbye from Australia. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.